It's horrible what happened in the United Kingdom. When you step back, though, and compare it to scale, what the United Kingdom's government has done, terrorists can't hold a candle to the UK's military and intelligence agencies. But it's not a pissing contest. You just condemn them both. It's wrong to blow up people at a concert. It's also wrong to drop bombs on cities. Obviously, it's wrong to arm mercenaries that are chopping off children's heads and the things the British white helmets have been complicit in their Al Nusra's medical wing and propaganda arm. You have to identify the enemies. And you cannot collectively blame British people, all of them, because of what their government's doing or what the White Helmets are doing or what this particular politician said or this one racist guy I know said. You can also not collectively blame the Muslims for how some fanatics have acted, especially when the schools that produce these fanatics, all these madrasas, have a long history of being backed by the CIA and Western intelligence agencies for the purpose of fostering sectarian violence and useful cannon fodder. There's the backdrop that's missing. And yet it will go on because there'll be some kid going to school today in Manchester who's Muslim and they're probably going to catch shit for it because of what just happened, even though they have nothing to do with it any more than I did in Japan. Nothing to do with the bombing. And there will also be a lot of hatred towards the West because somebody picked on that kid then others are going to blame Brits in general and go off and bomb something, which is just going to cause more of it. It's this kind of collectivism that is at the root of these problems. But I also want to talk about something else. Because being Muslim is not biological, it's a choice. You don't have to be Muslim. You say, oh, I'm catching all this shit. I'm like, well... You don't have to showboat your faith. You know, you don't have to tell anyone or preach to people whatever. You can believe what you want to believe uh, and not put it in everyone's faces. That's one option. But, oh, you have a right to put it in their face? Yes, you do. And they have a right to react to that. And so, yes, you have freedom of speech and expression, and so do they. When you go and say something or do something, you, you can't then control everyone's reactions to it and say, yeah, well, I want them to accept everything. Especially when you're not accepting their culture yourself. You want them to bend to you, but you won't to them. I mean, that's just hypocrisy. Obviously, we'd like to be able to express our views and have acceptance or tolerance at least. But be realistic. I'm not sure being Muslim always is a choice or Jewish or whatever. Especially for diaspora. They, I don't like it when diaspora groups use their faith as a way of defining themselves as the other. That's not a good formula to try to get along with people. There might be some kid uh, wearing the hijab, going to school, getting picked on, who doesn't even want to wear the hijab. Who doesn't even believe there's a reason for it. Doesn't believe in the faith. But they have to act like it anyway and put up with all the shit for it because their own family will disown them if they don't. There's some kid that doesn't want to wear the little yarmulke and they know they're going to get shit for it and they don't believe in it, but they do it anyway because their family will disown them. If they speak out against Zionism, unless they do it secretly, their own family will cut them off. I've talked to so many Jews who... You know, and it's not even the religion like the Moses and God dogma part. It's the sort of chosen people section of the religion that really nails them. Because they're so-called atheists that still believe in part of the religion and rejected the God stuff and still believe in the historical fantasies. But they don't mind even if they 
reject some of the teachings in God, but if they are not pro-Israel, their family will cut them off completely. Because that's their real religion. You need to have a choice. You should not put your personal religious beliefs ahead of your child's personal freedom. If they want to be a Buddhist or a Christian or an atheist or whatever, that's up to them based on, you know, the evidence they gather and what they want to believe or not believe. And you should love your children unconditionally. You can argue with them and you can say why this is wrong or not, but you don't disown somebody because they don't have the same religion and same religious sect as you do. If your religion is more important than your child, you have a problem. You do. There are things I really love. You know, I don't, I don't have religion, but <laughs> I used to. Uh, so I understand it and all, but I don't care if my son is into Marvel or martial arts or whatever or politics or any of my interests. Because he's his own person. And he can do what he wants to do. Can do sports or not. Can do piano or not. Can do whatever. That happiness is what matters. But I think in a lot of religious families, defining themselves as the other is the most important thing. And that's what these hijab and kafi and stuff are really about. It's signaling to everybody, hey, I'm different. I have a different religion than you. That's the only reason it's important. It's like, like I hold on to these beliefs. Well... Just anticipate the reaction from that, all right? You know, if you behave a certain way, people will respond a certain way. And you don't have time to sit down and have a long intellectual conversation explain the details of your faith to people. If you're just going to showboat it and sloganeer, you're going to get sloganeers in return. So just know that before you engage that behavior. And be honest with yourself. Would you be okay if your child just didn't do it, didn't wear it, or whatever. If not, if you can't be accepting of that, of your own son or daughter, how can you expect the whole society, especially a foreign society, if you moved to, say, England or something, to accept you and your faith when you can't even do it for your own family members? Just take that as a note. And if you can, great. But there's... It's wrong for society to condemn people. It's also wrong for a family to do it, you know, internally. If you don't really have freedom of religion of your own family members, then you cannot expect the entire society to accept your religious beliefs. Because that's one of the beliefs they don't accept. If you don't have a freedom to choose your beliefs, and it's not a choice, then they don't have to accept that. This, they say, well, you know, Muslims are getting killed, yeah, by other Muslims, mostly, uh, you know, in quotes. And of course, everyone says anyone they don't like is not the real Muslims, it's, you know, what they believe themselves. All of it is Islam. It's bad kinds and not bad kinds. But they do believe in the, the tenets and things. And they can argue about how it's practiced and all that. But if you look, step back again, it's just another phase in history of imperialism. Before slaughtering all these people in the Middle East, history didn't start with the invasion of Iraq or the occupation of Palestine. The U.S. used to kill millions of Asians. They nuked Japan. They went to war with Korea. They killed two million people in Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. Then it was Latin America. You had Iran-Contra. You had the killing of tens of thousands of Nicaraguans. They invaded Honduras, Grenada, attacked Cuba. I mean, it'd be easier to name who they didn't attack rather than all the countries they did. And they were Catholic, Christians. Didn't matter. It killed them anyway. It wasn't about religion. Then it was about stopping communism. There's always an excuse. And then, of course, it all started by murdering millions, tens of millions of American Indians and colonizing Oceanic states, the Aborigine in Australia, in New Zealand. And 
obviously the colonialism in Africa, enslavement of Africans. Everybody gets a turn under the boot. Right now it's the Middle East. The Middle East itself and Islam itself was also an empire. They also enslaved Africans and Europeans. They also colonized Africa and Oceanic states and fought with each other and fought with Persians, fighting with India, fighting with Russia. It's not like the religion saved them from any of that. Their behavior was identical to Western powers. Government is the problem. You knew I was leading to that. It's not the type of government. It's not the type of religion. It's the government. They all do it. And the victims of all this aggression are not immune to it either. African states also had slaves and did and are killing each other right now in the millions. The Democratic Republic of the Congo has ongoing conflicts with itself and Rwanda. They are killing each other. Japan had an empire. They invaded and annexed Korea. Uh, took over large parts of China, uh, raped and murdered, etc. Government is a parasite with cancer and AIDS. We have to separate church and state, and we have to separate business and state. Because either one, but because really I, the church is a business. When you let business and state collude together, they will go to war for economic interest, which is what every war ever has been about. And all the rest is to just cloud your mind.